Next up in our CarlCon series, we're going to be taking a look at the Pentapop Vinic. And recently, the trend in CarlCon books has been to recommend these extremely lengthy lines with Knight C6. And I'm sorry, but I'm not into memorizing a couple hundred moves of theory just to suffer in a position that's drawn. As this is not my forte. I don't do this. And looking at the recent panel about Vinick books, on the other hand, especially on Chessable, uh, the classical stuff would say E6 is suffering a bit. And I'm not a big fan of playing positions where I'm worse. <laughs> I want to at least be able to fight. So I started looking around for alternatives, and I came across the games of Grandmaster Arkell. And he's a solid player which I like. I mean, uh, I just vibe with that. And when I was looking at his games, he was playing G6, and I found myself really liking the resulting positions that he was getting because you just get a game where you have room to outplay your opponent. So, for instance, the first game we're going to take a look at is with Knight F3, and this ends up being a colors reversed Queen's Gambit decline Tarash position. So D takes C4, and here I would play A6 and just get the exact colors reverse, which we've seen in the 1D4 repertoire that I've just covered recently. But Arkell in this game played Bishop G4 and gets a mainline type situation with the Tarash. And because he's a solid guy, he can work these positions forever and ever and ever. And though it may be equalish, he typically gets the job done, which we see here, where a pawn is going to be falling and wins the king and pawn ending without too much difficulty. Very clean game. So coming back, the main move seen by far is queen b3. And we're going to give up the, the pawn because it's going to be a target. I'd much rather be a pawn down and be playing with initiative than just be in a passive suffering position, which is, say, on move 5, e6 for black. So from here, we've got bishop e2 as the main line in practice, but we're first going to take a look at knight g to e2. And this next move is a bit flexible and interesting. Really like it, knight a6 have the idea to go to c7 to keep pressuring the d-pawn. So first, another sideline with g3. And I like this idea of the double pawns because our rook on a8 gets developed and we're able to continue to pressure here. And this is just an equal position. But it's like, what shade of equal are you comfortable with playing? And this is the type of game that I would much rather have compared to these highly theoretical positions where you're struggling to draw and if you miss, have one misstep, you lose the game. If I have one misstep here, I still have room to finesse my opponent and get out of the jam. And as we see this game being drawn, this is the type of draw I'm okay with. There was room to actually play a game of chess. Another game by our kill where he was the lower rated player by nearly 200 feet. So bishop f4 is another line here, back to this queen b6 idea. And sacking the pawn for play. And I really like black's position and chances here already as white's lagging way behind in development. And we get the play for the material. And after captures, there's just so much here, and White had enough in this position and resigned. So on to the main event with Bishop E2, Knight A6 again. And if he decides to take, this is of no real concern because we're able to have the Bishop pair. And after this Queen D6, Rook B8, we get our Bishop to the Great Square B7, and we're going to be getting our pawn back. The double pawns are of little consequence, like I said, bishop pair. So bishop f3, following the main line right along here, 
and uniformity across all of our plans. We have knight a6 and queen b6 with the quote-unquote Arkell system. And if he takes, we're back to another position with knight b4, rook d8. And I love the thematic overlap. And we get a game very similar to what we looked at before, except with the capture on c3. And room to grow and get better in the position. Bishop pair. And this is a game between Gelfand and Morozovic from Monte Carlo 2002, where Black's bishops are monsters here with the mate threat, Bishop G2, being nigh unstoppable. And last but certainly not least, we've got Knight G to E2 and Knight B4. And we're back to same old, same old position, different structure, and requires some accuracy, but Black's able to get a very playable position with room to grow. So this entire series is not so much about being hyper-focused on theory, it's about getting games and getting positions to be able to try to outplay your opponent. And this game was eventually drawn, but it just goes to show how solid these positions are for black. And if you are a Karo Khan player, you know exactly what I'm talking about with all of these theoretical variations of the Penobot Vinic. So definitely something worth considering to play this early G6 system and then the characteristic moves, what makes makes it the Arkell system. I'm labeling it this as the knight a6 followed by queen b6. I don't normally see that combination of pieces, but we get some interesting play. Well worth taking a look into. Thanks.